Welcome to this session on Lift Your Impact. I certainly hope you're really going to enjoy this session. I wanna thank you so much for spending the time here with me for this hour. Now, first of all, this session is going to be lively. It's going to be really interactive. So this is not the kind of webinar where you can be in the background secretly checking your emails or Instagram. This session is for you. So everything I'll share with you today, I've shared with many thousands of people around the world, but I don't want this session to be generic. I want this truly to be your session. So make sure that you grab your phone and you can point your camera phone towards the QR code that you see up on screen and tap the link and then straight away you'll be able to see my slides on your phone and you can take part in quiz questions all the way through. Menti that we're using, Mentimeter is anonymous and you don't need to download anything. So it's a great way for us all to take part together. So I certainly hope that you'll enjoy this session and take part and take away a lot of practical value. Now, if you haven't seen me before, as you heard, my name is Richard Newman. I'm the author of this book, and I'm the founder of Body Talk. I've been leading this team at Body Talk now for the last 23 years. We work all the way around the world. So no matter where you are, no matter what background you come from, no matter who you may be working with day after day, we know that these techniques work for you, for people from different industries across Europe, the Middle East, Asia, America, and Australia, and Africa. We've been there. We've worked with people near you who understand what you understand too. So we know that this works everywhere, but also we have this 20 person team at Body Talk. We get booked for about 2000 different events per year. And we're working with people in person, virtually, working with conflict resolution, sales pitches, presentation training. So there's a whole range of pieces that we're doing. But today we're gonna to talk about specifically how to lift your impact. Now, why is this so important? Why do you need to know this right now? Well, let's reflect on the last couple of years and how this has shifted everything in business. So think back to 2019. This was my business model. In 2019, 70% of our work involved getting on an airplane to go and work with our clients internationally. 30% was done in the UK. And 100% of our work involved being with people in person in an enclosed area. And just in case you missed this on the news, uh, everything that we did was made illegal. We couldn't get on a plane. We couldn't go and meet any of our clients. Everything that we did that gained us an income was canceled. We couldn't do it. And then suddenly I had people on my team feeling very worried. And maybe you can relate to this. Where are you? March, April, 2020. For me, I had people on my team coming to me saying, we're going out of business. We need to fire people. We need to take out big government loans. We need to refuse to pay our taxes. It's the only way we can survive. We had a big fancy London office that was costing us thousands of pounds every week, and we weren't even allowed to use it. And so people were starting to get uh, very anxious. And genuinely, over the last couple of years, a couple of training companies, big ones who've been there for a long time, they have gone out of business. And so people came to me and said, what are we going to do? So I started to ask an important question. And this is a question you can ask as well. I started to ask, well, what if, what if it's possible that our biggest challenge in life becomes our biggest opportunity? What if there's a way for us to work with our clients in a way that we never even dreamed of before and to save them and support them at a time when they need us more than ever? What if we could do that? And as a result of asking myself that question, then asking my team that question, asking our clients that question, we actually had transformational success and we have gone up financially every year, even though everything that we had done previously was made illegal. We still managed to achieve this. And we learned some massive lessons along the way, which is essentially these three key areas of success that I put into this book that just came out in May of this year. Three key areas that you need in order to thrive and lift the impact that you have on the people around you. So I'm gonna share with you what these are, and I want you to pay really close attention to this next bit, maybe make some notes as we go through, because in a moment, I'll be asking you to go onto your phone and let me know which one of these areas is most important for you. So keep your phone nearby, make sure you're ready to put your votes in on this, three major areas. So firstly, we noticed there was three big areas of concern that have happened for people over these last few years and still are happening today. Firstly, people are feeling much more stressed at the moment than they were a few years ago. Can you relate to this one? You may find that uh, since the days of 
virtual working have now arrived that you find you're in 17 zoom meetings a day you've got 400 emails people expect you to be available all the time because you've always got a laptop with you so of course you can do more things and the uh, the, the kpis have gone up and maybe the number of staff have gone down so there's a lot of people feeling very stressed so maybe you relate to that one now secondly we've noticed a lot of people are feeling lonely less connected with each other because they're spending less time with each other and then some people are saying to us that when they actually are going into the office that they're having less connection with the people around them there's less of the friendly banter and social time that they used to be and thirdly people have said to us they have a real sense of a lack of purpose where maybe you might find for yourself that you're showing up at the same steel and glass building and trying to hit the numbers each quarter and just wondering what is the point of all of these things that I'm doing. And so to help people with these three major challenges, these three major trends that have come up over these last few years, I put these into the book around these three key areas to success. So firstly, having a rock solid, powerful mindset making sure that you can be the rock in the storm so that no matter what's going around you in terms of politics and the economy or what's happening with your colleagues or your family, you can be uh, at the center of that with a powerful mindset that allows you to be the best version of you. Secondly, you need to make sure you've got deeper connections with people because it's nice making sure that you've got that sense of a strong mindset, that's great, but then you need to interact with other people, which is where it can go wrong. And so you need to have a deeper connection with other people if you want to get things done day after day. And then thirdly, having a sense of purpose, a sense that where you are, you're heading towards something that is meaningful for you, that will create a lasting legacy you can look back on and feel deeply proud of. So these three key areas. So I'd love to know, this is your chance to vote, which one of these is most important for you? So uh, I'd love for you to go to your keypads now. If you haven't done this yet, if you joined the call slightly late, then all you need to do is point your camera phone towards the QR code that's up on screen and uh, then you can be in and straight away you can be taking part in this piece or if you'd like to you can just open up a new browser window on a tablet an ipad and so on or on your laptop open up a new browser window with menti.com and put in the code and then straight away you can be taking part in today's session the more you take part the more value you'll gain and the more you can steer today's session to make this the session that you really need it to be so let's take a look at how people have voted uh, on here so a lot of people, I think the biggest one here that people want is a sense of purpose. Fantastic. And then after that, we're wanting to have uh, an increase of influence, deeper connections with people, less people on this call feeling lonely, which is a great, uh, great sign to see. And then next down, it's a confident mindset. Fabulous. So thank you so much for sharing this. I really appreciate it. This will help guide how I take it, your session forward over the next uh, 50 minutes or so. So let's talk about these three major areas then. And this is the three major areas that I put into the book, Lift Your Impact. Having a powerful mindset, having deeper connections with people, and setting up a purposeful future. I'm gonna share with you little nuggets about exactly how you can achieve that. So I encourage you as we go through, make sure you've got a notepad with you, be making lots of notes on all of these pieces to see uh, how you can be putting this stuff into practice immediately after today's session. So let's dive then into part one, lifting your mindset. Here's my next quiz question for you. So get ready for this one. So I'm going to go back to the early 2000s where the Max Planck Institute put together an experiment and they, they gave people a GPS tracker, they put them in a forest and they got them to compete against each other to see how far they could go in the space of six hours, how far from their starting point could they manage to get. And so just to give you a rough guide on this, I've run the London Marathon a couple of times and that is uh, 26 0.2 miles, so say 26 miles, about 42 kilometers. That's how far you run, and you aim to run it in about four hours. That's what people aim to do the marathon in, 26 miles, 42 kilometers. They were given six hours, competing against each other to see how far they could get. So I'd love for you to vote for me. How far do you think they went in six hours? Voting's open now, so make sure you're putting your votes in on your form over here. And when you put the vote in, make sure that you scroll down then to uh, press submit down here at the bottom. So putting in your votes, I'm gonna give you a couple of moments on that. 
If you haven't yet joined us on, on Menti and you're now thinking, I wish I had, please do make sure that you're joining in. If you're just observing this in the background, then you might as well be watching a recording. If you're here right now, get onto Menti, make this your session, guide the session through your votes as we go through. It's all anonymous, it's easy to take part. Okay, let's pop these up on screen and see which one is most popular. Okay, so, so far out of the votes that we've had, 15 miles, uh, which I guess is about 23 kilometers. That's been the most popular answer. Then after that, 24 miles. Then after that, 36 miles. Yeah, so that's, it seems like a relatively reasonable guess. I can tell you that the furthest that they actually went, the average that people managed to go in the space of six hours was two miles. Two miles. So well done to the 5% of you who managed to get that right. It was two miles in six hours when they're competing against each other to go as fast as they possibly could. So let me take a look at this for you. I'm gonna show you now an image of what the GPS tracker showed these people were doing for six hours. They weren't sitting down, they're not having a picnic, they were doing this. So take a look at this. Firstly, look at the blue lines on the left hand side of the screen the blue lines is what most people ended up doing now as you can see they were doing this sense of sort of walking around in circles they would be really going for it they're running running and then they think i think i've seen this tree before and then they'd run 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 i've definitely seen this tree before and so it was called the walking in circles experiment because it turns out that if we're not sure where we're going we actually genuinely start walking in circles so the average distance that people went was about two miles apart from SM over here. Would you like to know what SM did? Well, I'm sure you've all had an, a situation where you feel like you are working, working, working. You put your head down for three months, you're working so hard, and then suddenly you put your head up and you think, I feel like I'm just where I started. I feel like I'm just going around in circles. I'm working hard, getting nowhere. What did SM do? Well, SM did this on a different day to the other participants. And for everyone, when they started this experience, it was a cloudy day. But for SM, after about 15 minutes, when they're heading in this direction, after about 15 minutes, then the clouds parted and then they could see the stars. And so they could navigate suddenly to go in the direction that they wanted to. And they went four times further than anybody else. Uh, and so they were doing that by navigating based on a North Star. So that's what you need to have for yourself. If you're gonna have a sense of purpose and a really strong mindset in your work, you need to know what is your North Star. And the way that you get this is through having a clear sense of your top three values, the values and the principles that you can use to guide your life. That becomes your North Star compass. Now just try this out with me. I can't see you on this one, but I'm gonna get physical with you because I like to be interactive. I can't see you doing this, but please do it with me as you watch the video. So place one finger up just like this. And on the count of three, all I want you to do is to point to north from wherever you are in the world. I just want you to point to north. Okay, one, two, three, go. Point north, whichever way is north for you. Now, I can't see you, but I imagine that you're all going in sort of different directions depending on where you are. And you might be sitting there thinking, I don't know which way is north. Which way is north? I've been in this building before. I'm really not sure which way north is. So we tend to get lost with our bearings in life about where north happens to be unless you're holding a compass. The same is true with our work. We lose track of where we want to go. We lose our sense of purpose because we don't have our true north compass which I talk about at length uh, in the book, Lift Your Impact. And so you can get this true North Compass and have it with you at all times by figuring out your values. Let me explain this based on an experiment. And so this takes us to 2015, when David Cresswell and David Sherman did a whole series of experiments using the protocol called the Trier Social Stress Test. Trier Social Stress Test or TSST. And so uh, part of this experiment, one of the ones they did was they invited people to a job interview and they believe it's a real job interview for a job they really want. Before they went into the job interview, they told the panel to, uh, to make sure that when the person comes in, they were to sit back, fold their arms and shake their head. And occasionally they would say, this just isn't good enough. And then halfway through the interview, they'd say, I'd like you to stand up and immediately give a 10 minute presentation on why you should get the job and nobody else. And then partway through the presentation, they would interrupt them and say to them, okay, 
I've got some maths questions for you. Starting with the number 3,697, I want you to minus the number 38 from that number out loud over and over again until you reach zero, go. Faster, faster, not good enough, faster. So, and then they would say to them, okay, that's it, leave the room. That was their experience of the interview. Now you tell me, how are they trying to make these people feel in this experience? What do you think? Put your votes up, make sure you're taking part in this. Even if you think it's obvious, just make sure that you're always voting on this because you'll remember more of uh, what I've shared with you in this quick session that we have here. How do you think those people felt uh, at the end of that experience? What have we got here? Yeah, the most pos uh, popular answer is stressed, angry, hot and sweaty. Yeah, I can tell you absolutely right. This is, it was called the social stress test because they wanted to give them as much stress as possible. And what they did is before they went into the interview, and after they came out of the interview, they were measuring three things. They measured their heart rate, their cortisol level, which is the main stress hormone in the body, and they measured their adrenaline level. And sure enough, for half of the people, when they came out, their heart was beating through their chest, their adrenaline level was spiking, their cortisol was spiking as well. They felt extraordinarily stressed. But for the other half of the people, there was no change. They actually felt calm when they came out of this experience. Now, why would that be? So uh, what happened was uh, for the people going into this experience, uh, they, they were looking at what they could do to make them as stressed as possible, but just adjusted one thing for half of the participants. So for half of the participants, they got them to do this. They said, before you go in, I'd like you to write down a page about the most important values for you, the principles that you use to guide your life. And they would write down what these values are that they deeply care about, why they mattered to them, how they had helped them in key moments of their life, and then they went into the interview. And what they found is by doing this, by writing this down, it gave them internal validation. It connected them with their true north compass. They had internal validation. So when they went in to speak to the panel, it didn't really matter how the panel reacted because they weren't looking for validation from them, they already had it. Whereas the people who went in who hadn't done this, the other half who hadn't done this uh, top values experience, they went in, who are they looking for validation from? The panel, they're looking for external validation which was never ever going to come. And so they got more and more and more and more stressed as they failed to get the validation. So let me ask you a quick question. I can't see you, but I know that this may be true for you. Have you ever done this? Have you ever put something on social media like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn? You put something on social media and then checked it 30 minutes later to see how many likes you've got. That is seeking external validation and it creates a stress spiral that really messes up our day. And so instead of doing that, what you want to look for is internal validation. And that's what you can get by looking at these top three values. More importantly, they also said to the panel, hey, if you had to give the job to a group of people after this interview experience, who would you give it to? And there was an extraordinary correlation with the people who had written down their values being the people that would also have been uh, offered the job. They felt more confident, they came across more confident, and they got better results. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to share with me your values. So get ready for this, you're gonna share them up on the screen, it's all anonymous. But I want to clarify what is a value, because some people get confused between what they want and what they value. So uh, for example, I'll give you a couple of questions on this. Firstly, there was a guy who I worked with uh, a few years ago, this group of about 15 people in the room, and I got them to do this experience with me, writing down their values, and I said, who'd like to share? And this person said, I'll share, Richard, my number one value in life is money. And I said, oh, actually, money is something that you want, it's not really a value. Can you tell me why you want the money, and then we can talk about what the value is? And so he said, uh, yeah, when I was younger, we didn't have any money. Uh, when I came home from school, I didn't know where I was going to sleep. The only meal that I was guaranteed each day was the meal I had at lunchtime at school. And so he said, now that I'm older, I have a wife, I have a child, I want to make absolutely certain they always have three meals a day. And I want to make absolutely certain that they always have a roof over their head. And so you tell me, what do you think was his value? Just share it with me, put your votes up on the screen. What was his value? He wanted the money, but what value was that giving him? 
What do you think it is? Put your votes in. I'll give you a couple of seconds to fulfill this. Let's see how many people have voted. Put your votes in. If you're not taking part yet, then do make sure you use the QR code that is on screen or just go to menti.com, open up a new browser window and take part in today's session. The more you take part, the more value you're going to take away from this. So great. So uh, excellent. Yeah, most of you there, I think, have put in security. Yeah, the, all the other numbers are really low. So security. I said to him, I think what you really value here is security. And he said, you're right. I'm always making my decisions based on that. What was fascinating for me is there was somebody else in this room out of this 15 people. There was a lady on the other side of the table and she said, wait a second. I wrote down money as one of my values, but my story and my life is so different to his. What does that mean? And I said, OK, well, just share with me what your background is and why you care about money. And she said, well, the thing is for me, I, I never want to be restricted by money. She said, I've always had a relatively comfortable amount of money, but when I go to a restaurant, I never want to look at the prices. I just want to order what I feel like having. And she said she always kept her passport in her handbag so that if she felt like it on a Friday afternoon, she could go to the airport and buy a ticket to go wherever she wanted to be with for the weekend and be with whoever she wanted to be with, doing whatever she wanted to do. So you tell me, what was her value? She wanted the money, but she had a very different value behind it. What was her value? Put your votes in, fast you can, put them on, on the keyboards, make sure you're pressing it and then scrolling down to press submit down at the bottom over here. What have we got? How many votes we got in for this one? Fantastic, the votes are racing in and the very popular answer on this one is freedom. Freedom, yeah, exactly right. I said to her, I think you want freedom and everyone around her said, that is so true. She won't commit to anything, she just wants to have the freedom. So here's what I'd like you to do. In a moment, I'm gonna take you onto the next screen and if you're not taking part yet with the QR code, make sure that you've got it so that you can share your values. We're gonna do a lovely word cloud on, on the screen for your values. But just note this, I've just talked to you at length about security and freedom. I've actually primed your mind to think that your values might be security. I think I want security. I think I want freedom. So just put those to one side. And I'd like you to think genuinely, what are your values? And I'd like you to write down one word values as we do this. We get an amazing word cloud up on here. So please share, what are your top three values? And so you, you can put in one and then press submit, put in another one, press submit and so on until you've managed to do three. So I'm going to give you a moment to, uh, to have these come up and you can see all these lovely values from the people taking part today with Get Abstract, putting their values up on screen. Aim to go for one word if you can, or maybe one or two words or a short phrase if it needs to be. So we can see how many will come up on screen. Very nice. Wow, what a lovely group of people we've got here. People who care about family, honesty, loyalty, compassion's a big one in this group too, independence, kindness. Now you can also see that security and freedom are big words that are showing up in the middle too. That's because I talked about security and freedom beforehand. So it tends to prime you towards those two. But there's loads of lovely ones. Peace of mind, gratitude coming up, recognition, uh, faith, growth. Wow, this is a really amazing word cloud. Thank you so much for this. Now, what you can see, just notice how many different North Star compasses there are. Now, I know with the way that Get Abstract works, there could be 50 people from one company showing up uh, today to, to take part in this webinar. And notice how different their values may be. They all have the same goal in that work to hit the numbers at the end of the quarter to fulfill whatever that organization needs to fulfill. But the values are actually distinctly different. Your values are your North Star compass, that sense that it grounds your mindset, it makes you feel calm, it gives you validation and makes you more likely to perform well. You need to know what they are beyond what your company's values are, but what your company's mission statement is. You need to know what your values are because those are the things that really drive the best version of you. So I encourage you after today's session, get a piece of paper and write down your top three values and give yourself a paragraph about each one of these so that you can refer to it in future to give yourself internal validation. And then what you can do is you can just put a post-it note of these values and you can put it next to your bed 
or you can put it on your phone, you can put it next to your webcam, and you can just remind yourself of these values to give yourself that North Star compass every single day. Now then, beautiful word cloud, let's get into part two. Once you've worked on your mindset, you've given yourself validation, you've got your North Star compass, next you need to interact with other people, which is a challenge sometimes. So how do you lift your influence on other people? Well, there's so many different areas that I covered in the book, Lift Your Impact, that make sure that uh, you can increase the influence, impact, the connection, the understanding that you have of people around you from body language to conflict resolution, adapting your style to the needs of the audience. Today, what we're gonna touch on just briefly is storytelling, because there's one quick tip I can give you here that totally changes the dynamic of the e meetings and the interactions you have every day to lift your influence. So let's talk briefly about storytelling. In very simple terms, I do a longer session on storytelling, but this is very simple terms. In simple terms, a story is about a main character, a hero, who has challenges that they are facing, and they have goals that they want to achieve. And we relate to this because that feels like our life. You have challenges that you're experiencing day to day. You have goals that you'd like to achieve. And so we can relate to the hero in any story because they have challenges, they have goals. Now then, can you tell me though, there is a critical character that shows up in stories who helps the hero, helps move the hero away from their challenges and towards their goals. I've made this one multiple choice. So you can see if you can guess this one for me, who is it that's guiding the hero away from their challenges and towards their goals? What do you think? Put your answers in. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna give you an extra five seconds on this one so as many people as possible can put their answers in. Make sure you're voting on this one. The more times you vote, the more you'll remember this session, the more you'll take it away. So let's see how many people have voted so far. Not that many. Okay, put your votes in if you haven't done so, so far. The QR code is up on screen if you need to use it. Uh, open up a new browser window if you want to as well. Do make sure you're taking part. So who is it that's guiding the hero away from their challenges and towards their goals? Good, so we've got a bit of a mixture of answers over here. So firstly, 10% of you said the protagonist. The protagonist is really a technical term for the hero. They are the person aiming to overcome the challenges and achieve the goals. So I apologize, that's my only trick question on today. Uh, the villain, 15% of you went for villain. Now I can tell you that the villain creates tension for the hero, but doesn't really guide them away from their challenges towards their goal. The sidekick helps them, but well done to 63% of you who put the mentor. The mentor indeed is the correct answer, well done. So the mentor is the character that is guiding the hero away from challenges towards the goals, and the mentor is very often, very sadly, shown as an old white man with a long white beard. But in order to be a mentor, you don't need to be old, you don't need to be white, you don't even need to have a beard. <laughs> Anybody can be a mentor. A five-year-old child could be a mentor. What the mentor cares about is what is this person's challenge and what is this person's goal? And how do I get them from their challenge towards their goal? That's what the mentor really does. So you can see this showing up all the time. So you can see this showing up in say, uh, Harry Potter, where you have Dumbledore, who Dumbledore is an older, more powerful, more experienced wizard, but he doesn't defeat Voldemort. Instead, he sees Harry and Harry is the hero and he guides Harry away from his challenges and towards his goals as a mentor. If you go into the classic of Star Wars, you can see there Yoda, Yoda proving you can be small and green and still be a mentor. And so he's guiding Luke away from his challenges and towards his goals. And you can see so many more examples of mentors. Like in The Matrix, you have Neo with the Oracle. In the recent James Bond movies, you've had James Bond being mentored by M, played by Judi Dench, mentoring him towards a better version of himself. Now then, this is absolutely critical as a dynamic. If you can make sure that you focus on this in the meetings, the presentations you're having coming up over the next couple of weeks, this changes everything about your level of influence. So I'd like you to take a look at a quick hero mentor quiz to make sure you've understood this point. So here you go, quiz question for you. In a movie that probably needs no introduction from me, Titanic, uh, who is the hero in this movie? So put your votes in. Who do you think is the hero in this movie? 
the movie Titanic, which came out, how long ago did this come out now? 25 years ago, but it's still a classic that everybody seems to watch every Christmas. So which one of these is the hero in the movie? Is it Jack or is it Rose? Some people think it's the ship. It's not the ship. It's either Jack or Rose. Who do we think? Let's see how many votes we've got coming in. Okay, the votes are pouring in. Vote quicker and quicker. Get your votes in. Make sure you put your votes in if you want to. So who do we think? Who is the hero in the story of Titanic? Well, it's going into, it's nudging into the favor of Jack at this point. So just over 60% of you have said that you think that it is Jack. I can tell you, if you put down Jack, you are absolutely wrong. It's not Jack. It is not Jack. It is in fact Rose. So well done, 40% of you got this right. Rose is the hero of the story. What does that mean? The hero often goes on the biggest journey of change, the biggest journey of transformation. The hero has challenges and the hero has goals. So what is this movie of Titanic about? It's not about an iceberg. Everybody knows what's gonna happen with the iceberg. That's not the story. In this movie of Titanic, at the beginning, Rose feels trapped in her life. She feels trapped and by the end of the story, she feels free. So she is the hero. A uh, Jack always feels free. That's who he is. And he mentors her towards that mindset of being free. Now, a quick tip, just in case you're watching a movie on the weekend and you're thinking, I wonder who the mentor is. The mentor usually dies before the end of the movie. So that's the real reason that Jack had to die in the freezing ocean. When there's obviously room for three people on this door in the ocean, he can't get on it because he's the mentor. So he has to die so the hero can go on with her life. Okay, so now I have another question for you. Don't feel bad if you got that one wrong. Here, multiple choice, bringing it right up to date. This was the biggest movie at the box office around the world last year, which is Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. So this time I'm asking the question, who is the mentor? Who do you think is the mentor? In the movie of Maverick, now if you haven't seen it, that's okay. Uh, let me just give you the vague premise behind this. So uh, what happens is that it's 30 years after the original film and there's some young recruits who really need somebody who can come along and teach them how to be better pilots. And so they pick up the phone and they call Maverick and they say, can you come and teach these people how to be the best pilots they can possibly be? And uh, he shows up to do that. Rooster is the son of Goose who died in the original movie. Penny is in love with uh, Tom Cruise Maverick. Uh, in the movie and is there as a shoulder to cry on when he's not doing that well. Uh, Cyclone, played by John Hamm, is this character that brings in Maverick and tells him to stop being such a renegade. And then Ice is there as the sort of a su superior captain of the Academy. So who do we think it is? Uh, well done, you've put in your votes now. I can see, ooh, the edging out at the top there is Ice. So Maverick, um, now, this is the way I believe the movie was pitched to Tom Cruise. They said, Tom, you're getting a bit old now. What we'd like you to do is to be the mentor in this story. And I think that he said to them, actually, no, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to go on the mission and then everyone else is going to come with me and I'm going to save the day. So I'm going to be the hero. Uh, it's not Rooster who is uh, the mentor. Penny is a love interest and she helps guide a little bit. She's more of a sidekick uh, character. It's not Cyclone. Well done to 38% of you who put Ice, Iceman, who only has a few sentences to say uh, in the movie. He is the mentor. He is mentoring a maverick away from the pain of the past towards a better future. Now, you might be thinking at this point, that's nice movie trivia, Richard. How does that help me at work on Tuesday next week? So let me ask you this. Which one of these do you need to be at your next meeting? Which one of those do you need to be at your next meeting? So have a think. If you're meeting with your CEO, if you're meeting with your stakeholders, if you're meeting with your line manager, if you're meeting uh, with your colleagues, which one of these do you need to be at your next meeting? And genuinely think about it. We've got people on the call here from all over the world. I want you to think about your business, your work, wherever you are. Who are you meeting with? after today's webinar. Who do you need to be in that meeting? So have a think about it. So we've got a split opinion on this one, 23% going for hero, 76 or now 75 going for mentor. So it's a split opinion. So the answer we're going for here is the mentor. So well done, 75% of you or 72% of you now who went for the mentor. But let me clarify this because if you went for hero, you might think, well, hang on a second, does it depend? So to be clear, all of you, 
are the hero at the center of your own life experience. You have challenges that you're facing every day and you have goals that you want to achieve. So you are the hero at the center of your own life. But if you go into a meeting and you speak from your perspective, you lose your influence. What does that mean? If you go into a meeting, there's a lot of people who think that they're being a mentor, but they're not. They're secretly being a hero. What that means is that you might see someone go into meeting, uh, a meeting and say, hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Listen, um, I've got some concerns that I want to talk about, and I've got some goals that I'd like to achieve. And suddenly everyone stops listening and we think, so what? I've got concerns. I've got goals. What about me? And the person stops listening. So instead, what you need to do is to go into every meeting, every conversation, even if you're meeting with your CEO, if you are meeting with uh, your very important senior stakeholders, whoever you're meeting with, go in with the mentor mindset. Now, what does that mean? It means that you think about what is this person's challenge and what is this person's goal? So where are they right now? in terms of their major concerns and challenges and what goals would they love to achieve? And you want to speak about those things in the meeting because if you speak about those things, then suddenly they will feel compelled to listen. And all you have to do to lift your influence is link their challenges and their goals with the things that you want to talk about. And suddenly they become relevant, they become important, engaging for the memorable, motivational things that they want to take action on. So think about their challenges and their goals. Uh, now then, uh, one extra caveat I would say on this is if you are having a meeting with your mentor, then be the hero. Or if you're meeting with your life coach, then be the hero, let them be the mentor. In every other situation, go in with the mentor mindset. So if that's making sense for you, then all I'd like you to do is just hit the heart icon on your keypad. So I know this is making sense for you so far. If that's making sense, you wanna have a rock solid mindset and then you want to lift your influence by being in that mentor mindset as you approach other people. Think about their challenges, think about their goals, their values, what matters to them. Good, good, good. So uh, now then let's look at part three in Lift Your Impact. This three, third area of success is lifting your future. Because what I've noticed is that some people, they work on their mindset, they're doing yoga, they're doing meditation, they're getting centered in themselves, they go out and they do their work day after day, aiming to be influential with people around them, but they're not actually lifting their head up and thinking about where they want to be six months from now, six years from now, six decades from now. They're not thinking about that piece and then suddenly they can still be lost in the woods, just like that walking in circles experiment that I mentioned. So how do you lift your future? What do you need to do? So let's talk about it from the frame of reference or back to the future. If you're a back to the future fan, just hit the heart icon. So I know that you like this. I'm a huge fan of this movie. Uh, just in case uh, you, you, uh, you want to, you can still take part by using the QR code uh, down here. Yeah, lots of people saying they're a fan of this. It's a real classic. I grew up in the 1980s, so I'm a big fan of this. And I raise it because it's critical. It gives us a really nice insight into how to transform your future through one key phrase. So if you're a fan of the movie, like I am, uh, then you may know that uh, Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg, the creators of this film, they've been interviewed many times saying they never planned to make a sequel to this movie. It was going to be one big box office sensation like E.T. was a big movie in the 80s, huge success, no sequel. That was the same plan for Back to the Future but they had to make another movie. In fact, they made two more movies. Why? Because of this scene in the movie. So what happens is Doc Brown arrives in the time machine and he says, Marty, you've got to come back with me. And Marty says, where, Doc? And he says, back to the future. Get in the car. And Marty gets in the car and they go and make two more movies. Now just imagine if Doc Brown hadn't said that. Imagine if Doc Brown had said, oh, hi Marty, uh, what I need you to do is to come with me for the next three weeks where you're gonna be shot at, punched in the face, you're gonna be dragged behind a horse, you have to jump off a building, and then you're probably going to blow up the space-time continuum, killing everything that has ever existed. I think Marty would have looked at him and said, um, well, I, I've only just got home. I mean, I haven't had breakfast yet. You know, what's the rush? Uh, you've got a time machine. We could do this next week. Let's just take this offline. 
You heard that phrase in day-to-day -day business, let's just take this offline. What does that mean? It means let's never talk about this again and all of your dreams of what could happen disappear. And so he doesn't, he says, just get in the car. That's what you need to do in your own life in order to have the success that you truly deserve. What does that mean? You can transform your future by getting in the car. So getting in the car means this. Please jot this one down. If you're making some notes as we go through, get out your notepad for this one. How do you get in the car to transform your future? And that is down to a commitment, an action, and a ritual. This is how you transform your future. And it's true for something in your personal life. It's true for something in your professional life. You need a commitment, which is a long range commitment, something around about six months. You then need to think about an action that you can do daily towards this commitment and a ritual if you get off track. Now the commitment, very importantly, uh, people often ask me, well, I mean, how long term should that commitment be? Like I commit to do something in 10 years, well, actually, no. If you commit to do it in 10 years, then you'll never get started. It's always too far in the future. If you commit to do it tomorrow, then you think, I, I, this, I can't do it. I've got 200 emails to do. I can't do it. But if you commit to do something between three to six months from now, that's the sweet spot for really achieving something that feels meaningful, that feels worthwhile, that you'll feel proud of, and you're motivated to work on it every day because you think, I better get started on this. It's only three to six months from now. So let's talk more about the commitment. Now, the commitment is something that you need to make to yourself, then gain momentum, and then tell others. Now, what do I mean by this? So uh, I, uh, I ran the marathon uh, a couple of times uh, going back a few years. Not, not now. I'm not fit enough for the marathon now. But I did a couple of years ago. I ran the marathon in London twice, and I learned some key uh, components about changing your future through what happened here. So firstly, about making a commitment. Whether you're thinking about changing your personal life or your professional life, it's very important you make a commitment three to six months from now and you commit to yourself first before you tell anybody else. Now, the reason being the science shows that if you immediately give a huge commitment and you say to everybody, I'm going to be a millionaire or I'm going to increase sales by 20% or I'm going to run the marathon, what happens is people say, good for you, well done. They pat you on the back and you get this sort of, this feeling of, wow, okay, that's, that's really good. I feel better. And then your motivation goes down. Or they say to you, no, you can't increase sales by 20%. You'll never run a marathon and your motivation goes down. It's a bad idea. So what you need to do is make the commitment to yourself first and gain momentum for a couple of months and then you tell others. And when you tell others with a slight delay, you've already got the momentum behind you. So no matter what they say, you keep on going. If they say to you, well done, that's great, good for you, then suddenly you think, great, I'm gonna keep on going. And if they say, you can't do this, you've already got the momentum and you're going. Now, I can tell you from my personal experience, when I first decided to run the London Marathon, I genuinely didn't know if I could finish it. I'd never run more than five kilometers. And as I've explored with you earlier, a marathon is 42.2 kilometers. I didn't know if I could do it. So I started training for about two months. And then at a dinner party I was at, I said, hey, everyone, I've got something to share with you. I've actually got myself a place in the London Marathon. Let me tell you what happened. Firstly, about half the people who were there had no interest. They were like, well, that sounds boring, and off they went to eat. And I thought, oh, that's kind of disheartening. If I'd announced before I started training, I would have thought, well, oh, maybe I shouldn't run this marathon. Then there was somebody else at that dinner party uh, who had already signed up for the marathon as well and was getting loads of attention from people and support and sponsorship from people who looked at me like, oh, now, now it feels like what I'm doing isn't significant or unique because you're doing it too, and suddenly gave me no support either. And so because I delayed telling people, I thought, well, I'm still doing this. I'm training for it. I have momentum. I'm going to keep going, and now I'm going to prove to them that this is meaningful, important, and raise thousands of pounds for, for charity in the process. So that actually helped spur me on. So I encourage you, if you're going to raise sales by 20%, get some momentum first behind this to prove that this is working for you, then tell the CEO or then tell your client what's happening. So commitment to yourself first. Secondly, what you need to do is you need to make an action. And ideally, you make this action daily, daily. Why? Because you want to change your identity, changing your identity. So if you do something towards your goal every now and then, 
then you don't shift your mindset at all. You sort of think, oh, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. Shall I do it today? I don't know. Uh, but if you do something every single day, you suddenly go from who you were to who you want to be. So as an example of this, when I was training for the marathon, I would run three days a week, and on the other days per week, I changed what I ate, I was getting a massage, I was seeing a physiotherapist, I was doing something every single day to go from uh, someone who can walk 5K to my mindset became, I'm a marathon runner, because I was doing something every single day. You can do the same thing where if you want to increase sales by 20%, you then think of yourself as the 20% person. You do something every day that you believe will create an incremental shift that will build you towards that 20%. Don't do it once a quarter. Don't do it once a week, every single day to create that identity shift. Now, the third thing that you need to do is you've got to think about a ritual, a ritual that will keep you moving in this direction. By the way, if this is making sense to you at this point, I'd like you just to hit the heart icon where you think, oh, hang on a second. I now start to see where I've failed about some goals that I've had uh, in the past. Having a commitment, an action, and a ritual would really keep me on track. So just let me know, hit the heart icon so I know that you're staying on track with this piece. Now, the ritual is what you need to do just in case things are not going the way that they planned. So for example, when I was training for the marathon, uh, you, if you train for the London Marathon, the marathon is in April, so you have to train through the winter. And so it got to February, and I opened up the curtains in the morning, and there was deep snow. And I thought, I have to run 30 kilometers today, and I, if I do that, I'm going to slip, and I'm going to fall over, I'm going to hurt myself. And so instantly I said, I'm not going to do it. And then I thought, no, hang on a second, I have to, because I'm a marathon runner, I have to do something, I have to do my action every day, I've made a commitment, people now know about it, I've got momentum. I need my ritual. And my ritual, because I was supporting a charity that was helping people in Africa, I had this song, which was Shakira's Wacka Wacka, that I had connected with this charity and with the people who I was going to help. And so I sat down with this ritual and I played the song and I visualized these people receiving the money from the sponsorship, from running this marathon and the, the, their faces lighting up and all that it was going to mean to them. And by the end of this song, I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm running 30K. And I went to the gym. I took my iPad with me <laughs> and I stuck the iPad onto the running machine at the gym. And I then ran for three hours straight on a treadmill. And everyone around me was looking like, is this guy ever going to stop running? <laughs> what is he doing here? And I, I was watching Tom Cruise movies because he likes to run a lot in his movies. So I was, I was doing that while I was running. So I had this ritual, though, and the ritual was to reconnect me with my purpose. So here's what I'd like you to do right now. Make sure that you write down. Just grab a piece of paper, and I'd like you to write down what is something that you would love to achieve in the next three to six months? What would be meaningful for you personally or professionally? Just go for one thing for now. If it's something about your health, your relationships, your finance, your career, your business targets, write one thing you'd love to achieve in three to six months. It's a big commitment that would really mean something to you. Just jot that down. And then underneath it, you can write down what action, what kind of action could I do every day? Would it be that I need to call I need to call five clients every day, or I need to meet with three people in my team every day? What is an action you could do every day? Or is it changing where you go for lunch every day to, to have a healthy action every day? What would that be? Now, the last one, the ritual, it needs to be something you can do everywhere and involves your senses and it reconnects you with your purpose. So another example that I have, to reconnect me with a sense of purpose is that I run retreats uh, in the UK and the US based on Lift Your Impact. And I have some sense here, which is Sage and Palo Santo. And there's certain sense of purpose I have about the work that I do towards helping others. And if ever I think, oh, I just don't feel like doing it today, I can take these out. I smell them. I listen to music that is connecting me with the retreats that I run. And suddenly I'm thinking, okay, that's it. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to help people once again. So think about a ritual and do write it down for yourself. What is a ritual you could do? A song you could listen to? A smell that you would associate with something positive? Or some sort of meditation that you could do in a special part of your home that will help you reconnect with why you started on that commitment to begin with? So commitment, action, and a ritual. So those are the things that you need. If that's made sense, if that's helped you so far, just hit the heart icon so I know that you're on track with that and you're thinking, I'm going to do this, Richard. 
in the next three to six months, something big is going to happen. Uh, great. Lots of people saying yes on that one. I appreciate that. Now then, this has been a pretty quick session for us to uh, guide you through here on these key elements to go in this book. And I'm really keen for you to keep your learning going. Now, you can keep your learning going, of course, through the Get Abstract summary. You can get the full book through hardback, audio, and ebook. But here's what I'd like to do for you. I want to give you some free resources. So stay with me for a second. I want to give you some free videos, audio recordings, articles you can get off the back of this session. So, of course, you can go and buy this. It's available everywhere, all good bookshops. I encourage you to get it. It's got like workbook pages within it that you can use to write your own uh, information inside and loads more to explore. But also what you can do is, uh, you know, if you want to book us to come and work with your team somewhere around the world, we do conferences, workshops and coaching. It'd be my pleasure to come and work with you and your team wherever you happen to be. But let me give you some free resources. And so uh, the team and I at Body Talk, we put together some videos, articles and audio recordings to help you after a session like this. So if you'd like to get a hold of these, then just uh, stay with me for a second. I'll let you know how. Let me tell you what this is all about. So, for example, up here, you can see me interviewing my colleague, Mark. He's a voice expert. He has done 150 audio dramas. He's been on the West End stage. He's talking here about the power of your voice to improve your impact. My colleague, Alina Jenkins, down here, she spent 20 years at the BBC as a broadcaster. We created a free video for you on how to improve your virtual communication. Top right over there, my colleague uh, Charlie, who has uh, created a video on imposter syndrome, confidence, overcoming conflict. And then bottom right, we've got my colleague there, Emily, who has worked on uh, storytelling and scripting for various different companies. And she's talking about how to increase your authority to lift your impact. And we've got dozens of these videos that I would love to share with you. And there's loads of audio recordings as well, articles and social media posts we want to send to you for free to keep the learning going after today's session. So here's what you need to do after today's session. So you can go to, first of all, go to Menti on your screen. So if you're not on Menti already, you can just go to Menti on your screen. You can use the QR code that's down here. And you've got a little form on here. If you want to get the free resources, just put your name and email address in here and then you press submit and we will send you these resources twice per month. We, we don't wanna send it overwhelmingly, sending them every day. We'll send them twice per month, a video, an audio recording, and an article to keep you inspired and keep you going. So please do make sure you're signing up for that. Name and email address. And if you wanna stay in contact with me, by the way, if you're not on Menti and you wish that you were, you can actually just email directly video at ukbodytalk.com. If you send an email to that address, video at ukbodytalk.com, then uh, we'll make sure we get the resources to you if you couldn't get on Menti today. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I'm Richard Newman from Body Talk. Come connect with me. I share resources on LinkedIn about three or four days per week. I've got short 60 second videos, articles I'm sharing on there, podcasts I share on there as well. Come find me on LinkedIn, connect with me. And if you have any questions after today, that is the place for you to find me. And of course, we have the liftyourimpact.com website. If you're interested in the book, for you, for your colleagues, for so, so on, whoever you want to give it to as a gift, liftyourimpact.com forward slash the book, and you can find out more there. But for now, I've really enjoyed hosting this short session for you. It really matters to me to help you find your voice, find your purpose, and be able to lift your impact to have a legacy and a future that you really enjoy and deserve. So I hope this has opened your mind to a few simple things that you can be doing in that direction. I encourage you, keep your learning going. Don't let this just be something fun you did once. Keep the learning going from today. Sign up for those resources. And I hope to see you at some point in person. Maybe I'll come in to work with your company wherever you are around the world. That would be my pleasure. But for now, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for taking part. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you at some point in the future. So thank you very much. That's bye for me from now.